Blog Talk Radio. Hello and good afternoon to you and welcome. I'm your host, David Matthew Brown. This is Heart Talk Radio. As always, it is a pleasure having you here with me. It's a beautiful day out here in Los Angeles. Uh, let's hope it cools off for the next couple of days, but right now it's perfect. And as always, life is perfect, and we have another perfect guest that I'm honored to bring on the show. Uh, most of you know Jim Self. He is the founder of Mastering Alchemy, and we'll have a great half-hour talk with him about all the work that he's doing and some of the things and questions that you've had questions about that you've asked me that I figured that Jim would probably be a better person to answer. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest today. Jim Self is an international speaker, author, and leader in the field of spiritual development. He has been leading seminars on personal energy, management, and tools for mastering alchemy for over 27 years. It's an honor and a privilege to welcome Jim on Heart Talk Radio. Welcome, Jim. Hi, David. Nice to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for showing up, and like I brought up earlier, a lot of the listeners have a lot of questions, and we'll get to those questions in just a second, but I'm sure they're more curious about your work and what exactly is Mastering Alchemy, and what programs do you offer there? Well, um, the work that we do is about tools, skills, and enhancing abilities. You know, this shift is unfolding now very, very rapidly. And it's affecting absolutely everybody on the planet. Some are conscious of it. Some just feel something's not right. Others, like your uh, audience, is very conscious that there is something going on. That something feels many times uh, discomforting and uncomfortable. Other times it's very, very exciting. It depends on how you hold your attention point and where you place your attention point. Is is this a scary thing? It will be. If it's a wonderful adventure, it will be. So one of the things that occurs is people are not trained well, I use that word nicely, provided <laughs> they, they were not given skills, they were not given choices, they don't have an understanding of this energy system and how to manage it. And so mastering alchemy in my job is to provide very simple tools that are very impacting that will absolutely change how you view your life and the point of reference you live your life from, as well as additional skills and enhancing your abilities to really move effortlessly through this shift without getting it all over you. And those of you just listening in, this is Jim Self we're talking to, and you can go to his website at masteranalchemy.com. There's tons of free stuff. Uh, feel free to register your name and log into Master in Alchemy. There's one, I mean, so much free information, it's ridiculous. And it's an amazing <laughs> site to be a part of. I mean, it really is. It's, it's amazing. I, I've never, you know, I discovered you, I think, about four years ago, five years ago, when you were actually coming on my other show, Inside Out, to talk about your book, which is a really great book to read as well. And even then, I was impressed by how much information that you give just free. So I know a lot of people are always looking for a little something to get started with, and you can definitely get that at masteringalchemy.com. But let me bring up, you can answer these two points. You brought up attention. Where is it that most of us hold our attention? We hold our attention in something that is not even really described as a conscious awareness, and that something is time. We hold our attention in this concept of linear time. In, in third dimension, everything that we know, basically it's past, present, future, and then you die. That's how time works. But in <laughs> fact, that's not how time works at all. It is a aspect of time, but one of the things that happens in that mindset is when you really kind of look at your life, which means you have to get into the present moment to do that, you really see, and particularly watching other people, it becomes very obvious, that most of the time that we spend in our life is based on the past and hoping the past does not become the future. Or they told me if I would go do X, Y, and Z, I would be successful in the future. So to a great extent, we wind up spending a lot of time looking at the things we hope never happens to us again. 
I didn't like it when that thing happened to me. God, please don't let this thing ever happen to me again. But the thing that makes it all continuously revolve around this aspect of time is this very simple concept that most everybody knows about called the law of attraction. And even though people say, oh, I know about the law of attraction, you know, I saw the movie The Secret, I know all about that. You don't know about it because it's so simple. It simply says what you put your attention on, I, the universe who adores you, will give you exactly what you put your attention on. The thing about the law of attraction is the universe doesn't understand English and French and Spanish and all of those languages. What the universe understands is how you hold the vibration within your body. And so when people live in the past, I'm not okay, I'm embarrassed, I'm humiliated, I'm not a nice person, I'm afraid that they're going to find out about me, I'm not successful, you're not going to ever succeed, you're not attractive, you don't fit, nobody's going to like you. All those messages, we grab a hold of those and then embrace them. Even though I don't like them, I don't like them, we basically believe them. And they become the coats that we wear. And the universe wakes up the next morning and says, Oh, David, I can see you're wearing that victim again today. Well, <laughs> I will never second guess you because you're a creator with free will. And so I, the universe who adores you, will give you exactly what you are vibrating at again today. And it's a function of how we hold our attention in I'm not okay to a great extent. And the thing about not okay is I'll guarantee you, if we could go back to your worst moment of I hope they don't find out about me, I'm not okay, I guarantee you it was somebody else's thought, somebody else's opinion, somebody else's reaction to something you did that was quite wonderful that they didn't understand and they went, wow, what a jerk, what a terrible person. Ooh, that was really an ugly thing. And you were surprised and then scared. And we hold on to those moments. And many times those moments only take a second or two seconds to unfold. But they will drive our entire life as long as we live in the past and the future. And so I guess the next question would be, how does one start to break those patterns? Well, the simplest thing to do is, and you do this all the time, you move in and out of present time, and in this level, there's, it begins to be a little bit more involved. So present time, where you are able to look at your past or look at your future and then choose a different action, See, that's really a fourth dimensional space. You live in third and fourth dimension all the time, and we can talk about that if you'd like. But basically, would... once you step into that fourth dimensional space, it's, it has a number of components to it. Present time, right now. Like right now, we're very much in this fourth dimensional space because we're not worrying about yesterday or tomorrow or what's going to happen in an hour or half hour ago. We're really right here. When you can be clear enough to then choose well, I would like to do this, or I choose that. We do that all the time. In order to choose, you have to be in a fourth dimensional space. Just keep that part simple. But in that space, once you choose, you actually have the capacity to redirect your life. But most people, third dimensional folks, the people walking on the street who are generally unconscious of being unconscious, they don't have a clue. <laughs> That doesn't mean they're bad, please. They're, right. they're wonderful, they just haven't woken up yet. And But right. what happens is they're still living in that, I hope it doesn't happen to me again, or he said, she said, or those are not okay, these are okay, and I can go to that place, but I can't go to that place. All of our judgments and opinions and beliefs, of which is another subject, but interestingly, when you really look at it in fourth dimension in that present time, this is an absurd statement, but most of the thoughts you think and most of the beliefs you hold are not even yours. It's the mom, dad, teacher, minister of life who said, oh, here's how we live our life. We do this, we don't do that. We go here, we don't go there. We talk to these, we don't talk to those. 
And it's a conditioning that simply we go, okay, and then we live our life in those. Not even our thoughts, not even our beliefs. I was just going to bring that up. That's fascinating. I was going to recommend to our listeners as well that they read your, your I think it's two parts. It might be three on the fall of consciousness because it's a great thing to read for all of us. You were just mentioning the third, fourth, and then even the fifth dimension. Can you just break those up for all of us? Well, to be simple, I mean, they're not complex, but they take a little bit of attention. The third dimension is, let's call it a box, not a bad box or a good box, just a box. But when you can understand how the box works, What are the structures? What are kind of the rules of the box? How do you work in this box? How do you live in this box? Then you begin to become very interested in stepping out of the box into the fourth dimensional box. So here's how the third dimension is structured. It is very rigid. It operates in words like always and never. She's never going to be honest. He's always going to do it this way. In always and never... There's not much flexibility, and there's not much opportunity to change. Mm. Also, third dimension is conditional. It's very rigid. There is nothing unconditional in the third dimension. You begin to appear or have access to unconditional in a higher fourth dimensional space. But we play there occasionally, so it's familiar to us, but we're defining the box. In the third dimension, it operates in present time. It operates in linear time, that past, present, future, and then you die space. It also operates in such a way that most of the time you're in past and future. But when you do get into present time in third dimension, now remember, time-wise, I hope this doesn't happen to me again. So effectively, we take what we didn't like. We plant it right out in front of us in a future present time moment. And because future present time moments always come, we step right into exactly what we didn't want in another color size shape, but the same environmental experience, the same vibration. So in present time, in the third dimension, there's a little sliver but it's reactionary present time, third dimension. Oh, my God, this wasn't supposed to happen. Well, you're in present (laughs) time, but that's what third dimension present time is. So a couple more pieces, but basically you get the picture. Rigid, structured, unforgiving, um, very conditional, not in present time. And you go through these loops. Fourth dimension box, keep it very simple. It operates in present time. And in that level of present time where you're observing, you also have a word that doesn't exist in third dimension. And the word is choice. You get to choose how you wish to experience the moment you're in. There's also a wonderful word called paradox. Now, in this case, paradox simply means what was true a minute ago is not necessarily true anymore. And same as what was false. So when Mary shows up on your doorstep 20 years later and you know her as dishonest and rude and and broke your heart and lied to you and now she shows up on your doorstep, in present time you can say, I can remember the history, but hello, nice to see you because you are not the same one necessarily 20 years ago, but you are able to choose how to listen to this person, and then choose how you wish to engage. Because in that case, she may have showed up to say, I am so sorry I hurt you. I was a terrible person, and you were the best thing that ever happened to me. And I was scared and horrified, and I just ran away and lied to you. But do you know that 20 years ago? No. So in present time, allowing paradox... You might be very surprised at what used to be a thing may not be that thing any longer. And so fourth dimension is a stepping stone to the fifth dimension. And when you begin to play in the fifth dimension, the rules really change. The game changes. How you observe changes. An aspect of the third dimension also is the rational mind is in charge of everything. And its job is to keep you safe 
and have you fit in. But in the fourth dimensional space, you have choice. So you're not being necessarily rigidly locked into safe and fitting in, conforming. You begin to have choice. But the fifth dimension, it operates not in any of those third dimensional words because you can't be in the fifth dimension and take your baggage with you on this journey. So that fourth dimension gives you room to clear out lots of things. But the fifth dimension, in very simple entry terms, is well-being and beauty, graciousness, kindness, appreciation, gratitude, co-creation, cooperation, harmony and balance, and a smile that resonates in the heart. Mm. You basically see people for the beauty they are. They see you that way. There's no suspicion in the fifth dimension words like safety and trust do not even exist. There is nothing unsafe and there's nothing to distrust. But getting there, you can't take your baggage with you. But that fifth dimensional space is now very available to all of us on this planet. It's somewhat of a journey. It's not complicated, but it is a shift in how you live your life. And hence, that's why we teach tools and skills and enhanced abilities to be able to choose that life and simply not be the effect of the noise and the drama of that third dimensional game. Yeah, and I can be a testament to the work that you do, because we were just talking about it before we came on air briefly, is what I like about the tools that you offer or that you facilitate, that you teach to other people, is that they're simple, but there's also a sense of playfulness to it. Most of the time when, you, when you're introduced to different tools or different kinds of work, it, it almost appears to be work and yes. a lot of effort. And your your work, although you're, it's a practice and, you know, I don't want to take, there's not a, a word I can find to describe it, but it's just very playful and it's a wonderful practice to take on. And after a while, it just becomes, like you had brought up earlier, who you are. Exactly, exactly. You know, how successful are you when you are really serious, trying hard, <laughs> and then there's that possibility that I might fail at this? You know, no, how no, much fun is that? Yeah. The thing when you begin to realize you cannot fail at this game of life, it's impossible to not be okay. You can't be not okay. You can wear those coats. How do they feel? You know, it's like wearing a pair of shoes that are three sizes too small. <laughs> I mean, good for you, but how do you like them? See, when you can start to recognize that you can move in ease and you can try to accomplish something and not succeed, but that doesn't mean you fail or you're bad. It just means, oops, hmm, that didn't work. How else can you do that? I mean, think about it. If the first time the little baby fell down with her first step and you went, bad, 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 duh. How many people do that? They go, wow, <laughs> she took her first step. But what if the wow could continue with every a new experiment that that little child that's now 50, 60, 70, 80 years old undertook on that path? What do you think their life would be like at 50, 60, 70, 80? Uh, glorious. Exactly. And, and, and is, that's is, what... Go ahead. Is this, oh, I'm sorry. Is this a shift that we're that you've been talking about that we're moving from the third dimension to the fourth and fifth? Well, let me put it this way. Which thought feels better? The one that's playful and enjoyable and you can't do it wrong or the one that's serious, worrying, and, oh, my God, I might make a mistake? <laughs> Welcome to the difference between the higher fourth, fifth, and that third dimensional reality we've all grown up in. It's a shift of attention, and you will find that the world around you, although the trees, the house, the chair, the window, the job, the building you go to work in, is all the same. See, that's form. That's not third dimension. But when you play in those places, how you hold your attention and what box you choose to experience yourself in, the exact experience that you would have had in defined as a third dimensional experience, defined as a fifth dimensional experience, the exact thing is very, very different in how the outcome unfolds. And generally, not only the outcome for you, 
but the outcome for all that are engaged in that experience. And, and is that how you've been able to kind of handle both worlds? Yes. Because what, what I notice in my work, especially in counseling, is that a lot of people, as they begin to expand or, or let go or however you want to look at it, they get this insight, well, now, I, now I'm going to go be a healer. <laughs> and then that, that doesn't feel right to them because of the job, you know, they enjoy what they do. They they love their job, whether you know whether they're producing movies or whatever it is that they're doing. And uh, so, how does that how does that is that how it works for you to to work and in, to integrate it in, in the well, world? You, see, it doesn't matter. You could you could drive the garbage truck, and if you love it, and you notice the flowers that are on the path that you are driving the truck along every day, versus the smell in the truck every stop there's a new smell a new odor a new <laughs> ah. which journey which journey feels better right. and so it's the same driving the truck it's the same garbage going into the truck but one day will go faster than the other day one day will be filled with a present time sense that the day just Kind of didn't even happen. It just started, and it's now here. And that old way of, God, what time is it? When's this job going to get over? <laughs> that that goes away. You begin to love every moment, and the day just unfolds, You know, which is a whole other part of this. Anybody noticing that time seems to be going faster. Yeah. And there's another two pair of parts that anybody notice you have more on your plate today than you did yesterday. And then the third part of it that's really entertaining is anybody noticing you're losing your memory? Yeah. And most say yes. I can't quite find that word for spoon, even though I've got it in my hand and I'm looking at it. <laughs> yeah. It's not Alzheimer's. It's not dementia. It's the shift. You see, time is collapsing. You have less and less time to accomplish the task that you are very familiar with. So if it took you five minutes to walk from point A to point B and you do it every single day, you do it with your eyes closed, you know the rhythm, you know exactly when you're going to arrive, what happens when time collapses, you now only have four minutes instead of five minutes to walk that same path. And all of a sudden there's something in the body, the internal clock's going, go faster, hurry up. We're, we don't have enough time. And so... Time is part of this shift, and it's collapsing. The past and the future are beginning to be collapsed into the present time. But the wonderful part of that is the question, are you noticing you're losing your memory? Because in losing your memory, what you're really losing, because the universe adores you, it's helping you clear away all of that which you are not. It's simply stripping away from you. I'm not okay. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. This is my life. No. The flower on the journey is your life. The beauty is your life. You've just been wearing a pair of shoes that are way too small and have hurt for too long. When the memory of who you're not goes away, what you are about to step into is who you have always been. And it's really quite uh, remarkable. We're talking to Jim Self. You can go to the website at masterandalchemy.com. You can learn more about Jim and all the wonderful work. And, and really, if you're listening to this right now, when you go there, register because there's so much information. It, it's, it's literally amazing. And, and if you have a chance, also go and, and listen to Jim when he does his teleseminars. Those are great, too. He's just, just a wealth of information. But before I let you go, Jim, I know that some people – always ask the question, well, how do I know what my soul purpose is? Well, how do you, have I, to, how do, yeah. you have to know yourself because mm. the thing you will find out, and you will find out, is you are <laughs> the soul. You are the soul. But to see the soul can't get into this physical, emotional, mental density. When you hold ugly thoughts, as in I'm not okay, and judgments and opinions and resentments and resistances. And when the body gets real tense in that stress, 
there's no fertileness to the ground in the heart for the soul to come into. It's like parched soil and you're wondering why the crops aren't growing. You have to nurture yourself, be pleased with yourself, like yourself, find happy in the present moment. It's in that space is where you begin to get away from that third dimension into that higher fourth, into that fifth. And then you realize that so much of what you've experienced to this point is really simply noise and drama, most of which has nothing to do with you at all, except you continuously put your finger in the light socket. You forgot to read the message that said, you do not have to repeat as often as possible. And yet we keep doing it over and over. When you find that space of pleased with yourself and you can simply sit and it's like looking at a little baby smiling and you feel that smile in the heart or sitting there walking around the particular corner at Yosemite National Park looking across a half a mile of flowers into 5,000 feet of rocks on a blue sunny day with 2,500 feet of water flowing over it and the only thing you can really say is wow God you did a job on this one See, Mm. that's the love that you are. And it's in that fertileness that you will answer the question, what is my soul purpose and what is the soul? And that's Mm. where you'll find it. Absolutely beautiful. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jim, for joining me on, on our talk radio. Oh, David, thanks for having me anytime. I appreciate your all the work you do and the wonderful things that you talk and tell people all about. So keep up the great work. You too. Thank you so much. Yes, blessings. Blessings to you. That was Jim Self joining us here on Her Talk Radio. You can learn more about Jim and discover all the interesting things that he's doing at MasteringAlchemy.com, really and sincerely. If you get a chance, go on that site, register. He gives so much free information. It is absolutely ridiculous. And... It's one of the things that attracted me to the site and got me hooked on his work, and I just love him, especially as a a healer myself and doing energy work and work that I do with people. A lot of that is geared towards, and a big thank you to Jim for the work that he's brought to us here on this planet, and I imagine that more people will be discovering him and the work that he does on an everyday basis as we start to get more and more away from what we're not, as he, he described, and start moving into who we are. If you want to get a hold of me, feel free to do that by emailing me at semjase64 at gmail.com. That's semjase64. God bless each and every one of you, and you are a blessing. Bye-bye.